Ron, how satisfied were you with your deadline day business then? Really excited, um, really happy. I think they'll add a lot to the change room, the two of them. Um, you know, I think, you know, speaking to speaking to my staff, and I think, you know, somebody like Craig, who he belongs to this club, you know, he's, he, he needs to be here, I think. And you see it with Billy Sharp at Sheffield United and things like that. It's just the club's meant to be for him. And um, he'll bring so much to, to the change room. He already has in the few days he's been here. Um, just that experience and know-how and, and uh, enthusiasm for the club, really. So delighted to have Craig and Granty is somebody I've known for for a while. Um, I've known for a while the possibility that we could get him. Um, so really pleased to get that over the line. He's perfect for the way we play. He he gets on the game. He dictates the game. Um, but he's also got a nasty side to him and an aggression aggression about him and something I think we we lack a little, little bit at the minute. Yeah, just talking about Craig, I mean, we all know what he's capable of, don't we? We saw it with his 99 goals in his, his first spell here, and he sounds confident that he's getting back to towards the fitness that, that means he can do that again and, and score the goals and get in the positions he used to get into. He's com- I think the last time he came back on loan from Brighton, I think he was he, he, he just got back from a real bad injury. Um, he was probably five kilos heavier than he than he was when he played here. Um, you know, first thing we'd noticed, I haven't seen him and watched him, was that he looks back to himself he looks like the old Craig that was here and he looks sharp he looks fit um, he looks like he's lost that weight well I know he has um, and he's hungry he's hungry he's got a point to prove he, you know he's he, I think he obviously he wants to get that goal for the 100 but I'm sure he'll go on and get more than just that because he's got a point to prove for, for not only for for this club but for himself um, yes he's, he's been here and done it over the years but his last loan spell probably didn't go as well as he as he had liked, but um, he's looking forward to it. And he, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him play. And Anthony Grant, as you said, is a quality sort of proven League One performer, isn't he? And adds plenty of experience at 29 years of age, plenty of games under his belt at this level, which, which I guess you need in a youngish dressing room. He's a he's a character. He's he is he's he leads by example. He's been the captain of, at, at Port Vale and probably two or three other clubs that he's been at. Um, he's not afraid to, to state an opinion. Um, which I like. I, I like people who are not just going to be, you know, bound down to your every word, and um, they they'll say it there how they feel. And um, them them sort of characters are massive um, in a team that's, you know, trying to get into the playoffs. Um, you need them people. Um, I think I remember myself coming here at 30 years of age. Was um, I came and I, and one of the big things I did come for was to try and help the young players that we had in the changing room, um, the likes of Craig and George and people like that so he'll do that with our young lads and I'm sure he'll help Chris Forrester, Leo, Guillaume, Martin Samuels and people like you know all those boys chattel in and um, he'll definitely uh, you know be there to shoulder to cry on at times and then sometimes you know to pick him up and, and give him that belief. Mm. He may get a hot reception at the weekend of course ironic he's going back to his former club from what you're saying it sounds like that won't phase him one little bit. No he's looking forward to it um, I'm sure he will get a, a bit of a reception you know it's um, but well, that's football, you know. We just for, unfortunate for him that they signed in the next club we play against is Port Vale um, after the window. So that, that's it, you know. That's just the way it's on. I'm sure that won't bother him. Um, he's played, you know, three, four hundred games. So um, going back to play against him one of his old clubs, I'm sure he's done plenty of times. Mm. And the other thing, of course, to mention that's maybe been a bit lost with the signers coming in is that you didn't lose anyone. You kept you kept your squad together, which I know you were desperate to do. No, I was delighted with that. Um, I was delighted to keep everyone together. You know. The chairman did say to me that you know we, we'll keep people together here. Um, but we'll, you know, we need to have a big audit, and I, I thank him and Barry for that. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm delighted that everyone's here. We can all knuckle down now and you know, one aim, which has been from the start of the season. Yes, we'll concentrate on game by game, but the aim is still there for us to, and we didn't reach for us to to have a go at getting into the playoffs, or if not better. But you know, we always got to set the bar high, and um, we know what we need to do. I guess knuckling down is a key term, isn't it? Because you mentioned after Saturday that you were a bit worried about January, heads being turned and that kind of thing. Those players whose heads may have been turned, you're confident they will knuckle down, concentrate on the job in, in hand and really do everything they can to get this club where you want it to be? By that term, I was worried about January is probably because it's my first time in management. Um, I didn't know how it worked, really. Um, and But every club is the same, you know, in, in this in this period of time over January and um, 
you know, I wasn't using that as an excuse. We haven't been good for a month. Um, that's not that's no excuse whatsoever. We we uh, we've got everybody here. No one's left the club. Um, and I'm just looking forward now to working with a group, knowing what I've got, um, and working with them now to the end of the season, and hopefully trying to improve them. Um, and if I can improve them on the training ground, I'm, I'm sure their performances will 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 kick in after that. So, yeah, we need to start. You know, we'd stay together, unite now, and um, everyone's got one one, one goal. And um, you know, the boys are well aware of that. How have the players been this week? Have they sort of managed to pick themselves up after that disappointment on Saturday? They have, yeah. They've, they've had, we've had a couple of uh, little bonding sessions really. In terms of we haven't done much of it, and uh, like the boys went bowling on Tuesday night, and I took them out for a meal last night, and so it's um, it's been good just to get everyone together a little bit more and uh, realise that we are nine points away from third place in the league. That's where we are. That's the reality. Um, people can say, yeah, but you've done this and that in previous games. They, them games have gone. We only look forward to the next one, and. Uh, Hopefully we can go and get a positive result at, at uh, Portfield. Mm -hmm. And we talked about Grant coming in earlier. All the more important, I know he, he probably would have come in anyway, but all the more important with Boss to account for, what, four weeks with his broken jaw? Yeah, ter terrible news for us, really. It's, um, you know, he played through the game. I think he received an elbow off Aniki from MK Dons and played through the game. He was, he was sore after the game. Uh, he come in and trained as normal on Monday, but reported to the physio that he was still feeling it. So... I think it's in a position in his jaw where they can't make a mask for him. Sometimes you can make a mask, and just the position where it is, they, there's no one, there's no mask that can be made. It's like three percent chance of something like a three percent chance of breaking the certain part of the jaw that he's broke. So, um, just start up, but it's one of them things, and you know you get on with it. Um, don't hide behind it. We uh, we'll have to go with them. Hugh's okay. He was struggling with illness, I think, and a dead leg as well on on Saturday. Is he back and fit? Um, I'm hoping he's. Um, well, I'm hoping he's your train tomorrow. Um, he hasn't trained trained all week. Uh, he had illness and um, a little dead leg he had, so it was quite a bad one. Um, so I'm hoping he'll be training tomorrow. He's he's done some stuff today with the uh, the fitness coach and the physio. So I'm hoping he's all good to go. Everyone else okay apart from the the ones we know about the long termers? Yeah, everyone's fine. Everyone's trained as normal. So. Um, just the Michael Bossert one and the Andrew Hughes and hopefully Hughes will train tomorrow. Bozzy obviously not and um, Jack Baldwin's been out in the pitch this week. He'll train as normal with the group next week which is good news and good to have him back. Port Vale are at a side obviously struggling um, down near the foot of the table but their home record is very strong isn't it? I think 25 of their 32 points this season have come at, at Vale Park so obviously a tough proposition particularly on their own patch. Yeah it's, it's always a tricky game there. You know over the years even when I've gone there it's always it's always a battle, to be honest. You have to roll your sleeves up and, and dig, dig hard for your team to get a result there, and um, it'll be no different. Um, no, Michael Brown, who, who their manager is, is the way he played. You know, his team, he, he, he always had aggression in his, in his play, and I'm sure he'll drum that into his team. So we know it's going to be a tricky game, but we we can't worry about Port Vale. You know, we need to worry about ourselves now. We need to make sure we go there with, um, you know, our game plan in place and, and ready to take a game to them. Is it a bit more difficult to prepare for how they might set up because they've had a, a lot of business both in and out actually over over the past what couple of weeks or so, quite a few out the door and, and a few fresh faces. So does that make it a bit tougher just to work out how they're going to set up, who's going to play? Team selection, we, we usually don't know until half one or quarter to two to when, when we get the team sheet. So <coughs> you can always guess it or you think they'll play like this or whatever, but we're always open to... Um, different formations they play, we always show the players different things that they play in different games and so there's no, you know, we don't leave any stone unturned, everyone will know exactly what way they play and what they may do and what way they may not do so um, yeah, we'll, we'll play that by year on Saturday. Mm. Nice big pitch isn't it at Vale Park, you always like that don't you, plenty of space for you to move the ball. It's a, it is, yeah, massive pitch, I think it's one of the biggest in the league so it's uh, good for us, um, we need to get back to moving the ball about like you just said there we'll get back to moving it quickly and playing forward more so we've done a lot of work this week on that so hopefully we can put it to put it to the test on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And you talk about January being a learning curve for you do you feel like you've come out of it sort of stronger and obviously with a, a just a bit more in your locker in terms of a manager because it's a, it's a chaotic time isn't it and it must be really difficult when you don't actually know what you're going to have to work with between now and the end of the season. It's a nightmare it's, it really is the window it's just the way the whole thing's Change now in terms of um, you know some boys who wanted to go out and loan now the window stopped they can't get out and loan it's not not just at our club but every club and 
Um, your phone doesn't stop through January. Honestly, the amount of phone calls, people throwing players at you, um, it can it can easily distract you. You know what I mean? It, it certainly can. And I heard a few of the managers complaining about games on transfer window de deadline day, and um, I can see where they're coming from. But um, it is what it is. It's like that at every club. Um, what I meant by it was, it wasn't, you know, my last uh, interview, it wasn't that my players were losing their focus or anything like that. It's just the fact that it was my first January and I was worried about it before it came up, but um, really pleased that the chairman and, and Barry hasn't sold any of our big players and um, we've got them here now till the end of the season.